Greetings, it is I, Flames and Dice, coming at you live with day two of the Box Boss Celebration Week. This time it's Valhalla, the second project uh, I actually did when starting this channel. Uh, one of my, one of my my second personal favorite game of all time, and definitely one of uh, the fun projects that I did. Oop. Uh, we'll be, as the title suggests, we'll be doing Prologue and Anna, two different tales uh, from the Valhalla bit set, bef I believe, before the events of the main story. Now, let me set this to full screen because when I was uh, setting this up, uh, windowed mode did not quite work properly. <laughs> For some reason, it would just display as a full uh, white uh, background, and it just would not show the game. So it's like, ah, eh. gonna have to do monitor gap. So hopefully, I don't get any bot invasions during the time. Because if I have to swap out to deal with them, <laughs> I'm gonna have to deal with finicky game. <laughs> In any case, I'm gonna jump right into it. We have three days of the prologue, and I believe Anna is just one day, so... Let us begin. Friday, December 9th. Good evening. Well, at least one of my employees showed up. Oh god, I can't see the menu properly. I need to move my figure again. Right, you get to be by Ridley and Plant, either. Huh? What about Gil? He mumbled something about holes, holes and pests, and asked for a couple of days off. Business as usual, then. Not quite. How so? I mean, us, not Gil. Business will be a tad different for the weekend. We got booked. That's a new one who made the booking. The Cypher Toy Company. They made toys for dogs. Doggos! It's our anniversary or something like that. We usually don't reserve the bar. Why do it this time? The clients are adorable. Damn right. Excuse me? You'll see. Anything special I should know? They'll give you a ticket to trade in for any drink they want. Just do your usual thing. Fair enough. I'll be in my office. Call me if you need me. Sure. Well then. Familiar, <laughs> a familiar screen. <laughs> we'll just pick up random. Boop. Boop. Uno momento. I like Snowfall. Snowfall is a fun one. Neon District, Cometry and Dream, and Skyline. <coughs> Excuse me. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Lord Pumple Rump. <laughs> I forgot these names. And yes, they are dogs. <laughs> um, excuse me. I'll have our grizzly temple. Hello? A dog. A talking dog. Uh, are you with the Cypher Toy Company? Yeah. Did I arrive too early? No. The clients are adorable. Son of a bitch. Quite literally. A grizzly temple, right? Coming right up. This dog wants a grizzly temple. Yes, we get three days of doggo clients. Grizzly temple. Three Edelhide, Brunson extract, powder delta, and one carmatrine. One, two, I know those keyboard shortcuts, but I don't remember them. I originally played this on console. <laughs> and I know when I streamed it. I did not <laughs> uh, use the shortcuts. Here you go. Thanks. I mean, thanks. This is going to be a long weekend, isn't it? Hey, it's the Bronson Nedstruct here produced using organic roots. I don't know that information. Anyone I could talk to about that? Here? Right now? No. 
We should have that information on hand. Every BTC certified bar is no different from a fast food chain. We get the same supplies as everyone else. Ask BTC officials if you want to know. But you should... But we don't. But... Say now, we should over and over isn't going to change reality. Give me something with lots of bronze and extract then. Something with lots of Time to get this doggo drunk. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't have a lot of bronze on. <laughs> just give him with one, just to be a dick. <laughs> That'll do. Five, one for an Agamanana. And because why not, I don't get punished for this. We're going to give as many Karmatrine as I can. This doggo is getting drunk. <laughs> Here's a gut punch. Oh, BRB, that is a thing at the door. Sorry about that. Parcel arrived, so... Let's get back to it. Here. What the hell is this? Your order. This is what Bronson x rock tastes like? Sorta, of, yeah. Well, fuck that noise. It's not worth the effort. <sighs> no, it's not. Excuse me. Thank God, a person. No, it's a Lilum, but stay. Still. Well, as much of a person as the designated driver can be. What I mean is, why are there so many dogs? Why dogs? Why? Well, the Corgis created the Cypher Toy Company, and they've been doing a great job, so. A company run exclusively by dogs? Really? And a good one at that. Who's a good boy? Their only problem is that they have a not-so-discreet preference for hiring corgis exclusively. Why? Something about being more comfortable around their own kind. Are you with them? Well, I do prefer corgis, but no, I mean, are you working with them? Yeah, well, I'm only here because the law requires at least one humanoid on the payroll. Does the law really cover such scenarios? Well, when you have talking dogs, why take a job like this? Because it means I'm surrounded by corgis all day long. <laughs> Understandable. Designated driver words aside, it's the closest thing to heaven. Although, to be fair, I'm not much of a drinker anyway. I see, well, to each their own. Are you gonna drink anything? Do you have anything non-alcoholic? Let's see what I can fetch you. Did you intend to make a pun? A pun? N never mind. <laughs> ah, we'll play. We'll play fetch. The door. Not the only thing I have. I don't have the gin. Okay, sugar rush is a nice easy one. And that's it. Boop. Here. Thanks. You sure this isn't alcoholic? Pretty sure. Okay. Listen, I need to know, is it really going to be only corgis today? Is that all I'm going to do all night? Surf the same kind of dog over and over? The vast majority of them are Pembroke Welsh corgis. There are a couple of Cardigan Welsh corgis. But the relationship between the two breeds is a tad difficult, so the Cardigans weren't invited. 
So yeah, I guess you'll be serving the same kind of dog all night. No, I mean... Isn't there some other human I might talk to today? There's a woman on staff, but she couldn't come today. Oh boy. Is that a problem somehow? It's not really a problem. We've survived worse than this. By that time when an AA meeting came here asking for non-alcoholic stuff only. <laughs> I just think about the fact I'm serving drinks to dogs. At some point, all the choices in my life led to me serving drinks to a group of talking dogs. It's one of those moments that make you want to stop and rethink where your life is going. I mean, it could be worse. Do you perhaps not like this job? I do! I love every second of this job, but dogs! It's like a fashion designer suddenly realizing he's been designing edible underwear. I still don't see what your problem is with the dogs, but I'm not going to force the subject. Well, I'm going to try entertaining myself for a bit. The sofa playing pool is underneath the table. There are also dots in the box next to the jukebox. Great, thanks for the information. Call if you need another drink. Sure. I'm feeling happy, so I'll get everyone around. Actually, it's a free bar. I won't let you spoil my mood. I want a fringe weaver. This doggo wants a fringe weaver. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aged, mixed, boop. Here you go. Still an awesome day. Dragon fucker. <laughs> Uh, I forgot these names. <laughs> Yo, what's an alpha male gonna do to get some service? Well, for starters, not be an asshole. What may I serve you? Beer, and quickly. Coming right up. One, one, two. One, one, two. One, two, three, four. All mixed. There you go. Here's your beer. Here you are. Damn, you're a slow piece of shit. Well, fuck you too. <laughs> hey boss, what was the opposite of deja vu again? Jamais vu. Yeah, that. Are you having a premonition? Something like that. A dog felt uncannily familiar. Are you bored? Not really. I was playing with the darts a little bit ago. I thought about playing pool, but all the other clients are... thumb-challenged. A lack of opposable thumbs will do that to you. Sorry if this sounds rude, but why was the dart box so dusty? You're the first person in a year or so that I... The bah, I've been here that has actually played with darts. I think even my boss forgot they existed. By the way, how are the dogs as clients? You've had worse. Have you had someone come in and gnaw chairs to pieces? <sighs> yes, she was testing out her new mechanical teeth. She got banned from entering any BTC bar after that. And it does like those, you think serving dogs would feel totally normal. You'd be wrong, because even then we were talking about humans. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've served a dog or two in my time, but they usually come in with someone. And they never talk. Now that I think about it, are these drinks bad for the dogs? Well, I would assume alcohol is probably not to be consumed by canines. Just a wild guess. Now you worry about that? But no, they aren't. Only cappuccino monkeys are at risk if they drink those chemicals. Anyway, you want anything to drink? Surprise me, but keep it non-alcoholic. A non-alcoholic surprise. Sparkle Star! Aged. Mixed. Here you go. Thank you. This might sound weird to ask, but they talk through their collars, right? That's right. How do they work? It's not too hard, really. They're just translators. It's like Google Translate. They eat the dog's brains and turn their thoughts into words. 
do keep in mind that it takes dark breeds of more cognitive capacity than their ancestors. If you put the translators on dogs from a decade ago, they wouldn't work like they do now. Yeah, I read something about that once. Another question, why do they wear those small tuxedos? It's good for PR. Yeah, you look better in a tux than you do in a plane. <laughs> than you do essentially naked, if you're a dog. Well, it'll be a bit before we go for the day. Any other questions? Yes, why the fuck do these dogs want to get drunk? <laughs> they see humans do it and think it might be fun. Just like teens, then. Now, if you'll excuse me. Satan's helper! <laughs> Moon. Moon. <laughs> uh, moon blast. Moon. A big moon blast. Moon. <laughs> this dog wants a big moon blast. Ah, <laughs> uh, so twelve. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One pad of Delta. No, two, I can't count. Two Flanagamagana and four Calmadrine. Uh, the one advantage of being off all week is I can just be loud. Well, not too loud, but I can be louder. Here, one moon blast. Moon! <laughs> Was that a good moon or a bad moon? Probably a good moon. Oh, rather sick, Picasso, Lispe. What? A crevice spike? Sure. Where I understand you, me? Pig Latin. I was kid too. <laughs> Create a spike. Wrong ingredient. One, two. One, two, three, four, and they get these dogs are getting wasted. Fill it up. And let's blend it. It'll knock the drunkenness out of you or knock you out cold. In this case, it'll knock you out cold. Note, please don't serve alcohol to your dogs. These are fictional dogs. Underappreciated drink. I got a new achievement. Let's go. Yeah. Thanks, day. All right. One more drink before we wrap things up. What do you want? I'm not picky. Give me anything. Of course. Anything, he said. Translation, something non-alcoholic. Let's give a bubbly drink. One, van, van, van. Aged, mixed. Here's some frothy water. Here you are. Thanks. So, what exactly do you do? Sorry if it's rude to ask. I guess I'm what people call an office boy. My duties usually involve looking for things, answering a few calls, that kind of stuff. So an admin worker. This being a dog run company, there are a lot more responsibilities, like getting stuff off shelves and opening windows. At least they pay well. I see. And how did you end up being in that position? Where did you get that offer? My neighbor is the owner of one of the dogs. He told me they needed thumbs. Two of them, to be specific. Figures. They are celebrating the company's anniversary, right? Yeah, five years ago, three corgis became dissatisfied with the quality of existing dog toys. So, they founded this company. They got the money from their owners, if I remember correctly. I could see that happening. Somehow. Entrepreneurial dogs? The STC is the second biggest dog toy company in the world. In fact, they started a cipher toy development. Ain't that unfortunate. Hello, hmm? The pod's favorite sweetheart has arrived. Why are you quiet? I'm waiting for the audience's cheers to stop. This isn't a sitcom. Ah, honey, how innocent. 
Um, excuse me, you are... I'm the lovely Dorothy Hayes at your sir... Wait, you're Lilim, not at your service, then. Don't be rude to other clients. She's kind of a regular here. Kind of? I've been coming here religiously for the past three months now. Three months, pouty face. I come here to see your charming face and you say I'm just kind of a regular? There should be another speech mark there. Grammar error! <laughs> For shame, honey. For shame. I'm sorry, I guess. Nothing a free drink won't solve. Won't do. Huh, you playing hard to get? Even if I wanted to give you a drink, we're booked to the whole weekend. Don't you think you should at least put a sign out friend or something? Hey, I only found out myself just a few minutes ago. You can have one of my tickets if you're okay with it. I see no problem. Oh, you're so sweet. If you're at least 40% organic, I would give you a discount. Discount? You don't need to know. So, who booked you? This guy? The Cypher Toy Company. What do they do? We, um, they create dog toys. Oh, lovely. It's also run by dogs. Oh, don't joke like that. You think I kid about something like that? Y y you mean that if I turn around, I see, s s see dogs? Yeah, didn't you see them when you came in? I, I just entered without looking anywhere else but the bar. You look troubled. I I'm not too much for a dog person. I even charge extra if my clients want it doggy style. <laughs> of course. Dog? You don't need to know. <laughs> I'm gonna take this ticket and trade it in next Monday. I, I'm leaving right now. And that was your Dorothy for the day. <laughs> ticket would have expired by then, though. No. She looks like the cold of kind of girl that would hold you to your promise regardless. Is it that obvious? Well, I had to gather the cabs outside. Keep it up, bartender. Good night. Good night, come again. Alright, says so the night's over. You have kennels you need to return to. All done? Yeah. Boss, how do you end up being booked by dogs? I know some dogs myself. Huh, <sighs> and you told me we're booked the whole weekend, right? That's right. Please bear with it. We're all doing our part after all. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta go for today. Bye. And this one is a little bit more straightforward. It's just three straight days. Rather than uh, you get the little uh, menu in thing. Ah, excuse me. About to burp. <laughs> Ugh. Good evening. Day two of serving dogs. Are you ready? Now. Cheer up! No. That attitude won't make things easier for yourself. Serving dogs won't eat things either. Have you had anything from Gil? Nope. But he should be having fun wherever he is. <laughs> also, did you know we had dots? Howdy, you know. How you doing? Yeah, I did. Why didn't you tell me? Because that's the kind of stuff you should just assume. A target board usually comes with a set of darts. Do you like darts, boss? Not particularly, but now I owe an apology to someone. Anyway, call me if you need anything. Sh sure. Well then. Get ready for some more doggo hijinks. Welcome to day two. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Doing better now that it's not too hot. How about you? Oh, we've been having a heat wave. I've been doing pretty good. I kind of conked out most of the morning, so... <laughs> I've had myself a coffee, done a couple of basic chores, and probably will do a little bit more later on. Also, Betty! One of the people we saw in the later game of Valhalla. This is when we first met her. Oh, hey! Can I get a big beer, please? Thank God, a human. Sure, coming right up. Deja vu. 
Oops. Beer. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mix, booze, fuck. Two, four, two, flanagamagam, I fucked it up. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four. Here's how you learn to count to four. One, two, one, two, three, four, eight. Six, seven, eight. Second time lucky. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. May I ask what you do for this dog, uh, Miss, um, Beatrice, but everyone calls me Betty. And why do you need to know that? If you've been stuck with dogs all day, you'd also be curious when a human walks in. Fair enough. I'm the veterinarian. They're all your clients? Yeah, company-issued vet. Makes sense. I mean... I have my own office, but it's in their building. So you're Betty the Ve Betty. Oh cram it! <laughs> uh, I love stupid puns. <laughs> How bad was the heat wave for you, Nia? Was it like forty C bad or worse? Sorry, not not in the mood for puns right now. I'll keep it in mind. Anything else I might need to avoid bringing up you around you besides puns? Enhancements, but that's harder to shove into the conversation in the first place. I'm sure I can find a way to enhance the conversation with that topic piece. Oh wait, that was a pun. Almost, oof. Yeah, the joys of summer. These heat waves suck. Bring on winter when it's going to be nice and cold. And also, the, I, I get to not have to worry about the disadvantage of snow. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's a work day or not when it's snowing, because I work at home. <laughs> Though, <sighs> as long as that snow doesn't knock out the power. And our central air was broken, so all we had were fans. Oof! And that was what a UK heat wave would feel like then. Because barely anybody in the UK has aircon. Like, I can only think of one person that I remembered having AC. And that was my ex of about God knows how long ago now. So, one person out of the many people I've met so far. It's a bit of a rarity in the UK. <laughs> and I don't think she'd be too particularly clean of some random dude she dated how long ago going, Hey, can I borrow your AC? <laughs> I don't mind the winter, I just hate shoveling in the ice. That is fair. Winter is nice when you don't have to worry about the consequences of it. When you have to deal with the consequences of the snow, like shit travel, having to shovel it so you can get out of your drive, or just literally traveling in snow, it sucks. When you're working from home, or you've got a day off, or you're a kid, it, it, it's, it's perfect. Summer, you just melt. Noted. What do you have against enhancements, anyway? They're unnatural. They go against the very idea of human evolution. Hmm. But there's a certain wall that humans can't cross without enhancements. Not like having something replaced will automatically make you an expert in things. If anything, getting an enhancement sets you back until you get used to it. Somehow, my last driveway... My last driveway? Oops. <laughs> My driveway is on a hill, so last winter is a little sheet of ice. Oof. God. Ice hill. Ugh. That's rough to... That just sounds awful. Yeah, but it just makes things too easy on paper. Made deliveries suck. Understandable. 
I'd say deliveries on a hill sound bad enough when you add ice to the equation. Anyone with money can replace their body parts and call it a day. But you have a point. Skill doesn't ship with enhancements, at least not yet. Sorry for the outburst, I have my story with enhancements. Oh, I don't mind. It's way more entertaining than serving drinks to talking dogs. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of which, that's my job right now. Do you want another drink? I'm fine for now. Call me if you need anything. Sure. Wor worm frigger. <laughs> Uh, you, if you just got here for day two, Neo, you missed a dog that was called Dragonfucker. We now have Wyrmfrigger. I can't pronounce. Wyrm? Wyrm? Hey Siri! Pronounce W-Y-R-M. Okay, I found this on the web for pronounce whim. Check it out. Whim. Worm. Wormfrigger. Hey, have you seen a red dot? I've seen many things in my life, but a red dot? Not today, no. Do you have any red drinks? Red drinks? Yeah, the trick might know something. R right, a red drink. Um. Well, Fedora has red. <laughs> Gut punch is orange. I don't know, Mars Blast? One, one, two, three, four, two. Let it blend. And boop, that's not red. I guess Sugar Rush is red. One powder delta. It's more pink than red. It'll do. Here. Thanks! Okay, fuck, hear me out. You're gonna tell me where that red dot went, or I'll drink you! I'm not bluffing, I'll drink you all up! Mmm. <laughs> That's one way. Ah, the Bangkok bastard. <laughs> I love the alliteration. Oh, damn Pomeranians! You get the old boomer voice because it's just basically... You get the stereotypical racist boomer uh, voice. Oh, damn Pomeranians! They think they can come and take our jobs! Excuse me? We begin some serious media attention because the company only hires corgis. Must be slow news day. But you know what I say? It's good that we don't hire anyone else. We don't need more racists ruining our workplace. Please do not take this out of context. <laughs> Next week, you know, they'll be asking us to hire cats. What other races bring these skills to the company? Hold up, what do you know? Now give me a bad touch. A, a, a bad touch for the bad dog. They took our jobs! Please note, this does not reflect the views of the Box Bar. The Bangkok Bastard is not affiliated with the Box Bar in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking racist dogs, there's a new one. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, all on the rocks, and mixed. Here. Humph! <laughs> Racist dogs. What are the odds? Well. <laughs> Wait, if I can't tell the differences between them, does that make me racist too? Omega Funk? Would it matter if you're racist against racists? Hmm, the real questions. Hmm. Bartender, please stop dozing off. I need booze, mood. Sorry, what can I get you? I'll have a Zen Star. Let's see if I remember. I think it's free of everything and mixed. Asking the important questions. Damn. 
The real question's here. Apparently I don't remember it fully. Fenstar. Oh, it's four on the rocks and mixed. I was close. I was off by one. <laughs> or technically, I was off by four. <laughs> Actually, no, that's five. I can count. <laughs> Honest. All on the rocks and mixed. Zenstar. Here. Thank you. Something on your mind? Willing to lend an ear? It's in the job description. Kind of. Alright then. So you mentioned the thing about talking dogs, I thought. People throughout the ages have always dreamt about talking to animals. Never mind the fact we could always understand that bo bo the boggy language. Body language. Now we understand them, what do we find out? They're just furry, adorable little office workers. Actually, scratch that. I've yet to met meet a furry office worker with half the charisma of these little guys. Oof. You've met furry office workers? <sighs> I've seen my share of the world, bartender. Well, that... <sighs> A furry office worker. <laughs> now I'm just having this very disturbing image of a dude in a fur suit in an office with, like, office worker attire, but it's just a fur suit. I feel like after these three days, I'm gonna need a drink. <laughs> and it's only Tuesday. <laughs> Sounds like you're tired. It's fleas and tick season. I am tired. So you're tick. <laughs> Don't you dare. <clears throat> and this is why I like chill a lot. <laughs> and this is why I, this is also part of the reason I related to chill a lot. Shit puns. I love them. Uh, ahem, well, this whole free bar thing is nice though, I guess. Would it be nicer if we actually had time to get properly ready? What do you mean? I found out about the booking yesterday as I was getting ready. Did the client ask for something special? Was there something I needed to know about them? My boss didn't specify anything. All she said to me was, pretend like it's any other day. You know, just with dogs. That was a screw up on our end, sorry. They were desperately looking for a place to celebrate. I was actually surprised to find out they got a place. Why all of a sudden plants? Did they forget their anniversary or something? Yeah, forgetting anniversaries is not a good thing. Just ask my... I'm just kidding. <laughs> we found a place, but the cardigans were the ones that hired it. Then some stupid arguments arose, and the cardigans decided they didn't want to have any Pembrokes at their parties. Goddamn racist dogs. <laughs> I swear to God, these dogs are annoying little suburban kids. What are these cardigans I keep hearing about? Oh, just another kind of corgi, except with different fur colors and a slightly different attitude. All of this is so silly. I've seen dogs play with cats, dogs play with other dogs. And dogs mating with dogs twice their size. As a dog owner, it that just reminds me of my old dog, Koro. Who would literally go for any dog that was just, like, fucking huge. Like... <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that big dog would have had them, had Koro as a snack. Had he pissed them off enough. Well, that's what happens when you have dogs mimicking their owners. I mean, that's the reason they're in a bar in the first place. But I guess the media focus on the Pembrokes probably didn't help. <sighs> well, if you excuse me, I have dogs to serve. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your job. Don't mind me. The Tortilla Pup! Tortilla Pup, best pup. Hey, buddy! Hello. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Um, you? I am? 
Whoa, thanks, buddy. What can I serve you? Well, a big sunshine cloud would be nice. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows? I think that's how the song goes. Three, four. Honestly, I kind of want to learn how to make uh, these kind of drinks. Just to see if there's any recipes that kind of just mimic it. Probably won't be exactly the same kind of taste, but that would be something that I'd like to learn. And let's just let it blend. Burning. Success. Here. Aw, oh, ain't you a cutie. Loopy doopy blue. Woof. Courage. You know what I hate, man? What do you hate, dog? Cabbages, man. They're like lettuces that decided to go to the gym. They think they're a big deal because their leaves are hotter. Guess what? I don't like them. Calm down, dog. Do you want anything? For cabbages to not exist. I meant to drink. Oh, I'll have a big grizzly temple then. The mutt wants a big grizzly temple. I feel like the cabbage uh, sales guy from Avatar The Last Airbender would like to have a word with this dog. Probably will end with, MY CABBAGES! Man, I need to watch, uh, rewatch Avatar The Last Airbender and actually watch The Legend of Korra. Has anybody watched The Legend of Korra? If so, how is it? <laughs> Let's get the Grizzly Temple served. Uh, big Grizzly Temple, so double. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And, uh, my cabbages. <laughs> Is that what I think it is? Oh, <laughs> it's meh. Ah, fair enough. Here you go. Chill out for a bit, dog. Thanks, man. <laughs> That's amazing. Bartender? Yeah. Do you have anything sweet? I am know, anyway. Oh, well, that's fair. I never really watched The Legend of Car. I'm... I know I've watched, like, chunks of Avatar The Last Airbender, but... You know the whole back in the day when you had to actually pay attention to the TV guide of when it was on? So, odds are, I've probably not watched all of Avatar, but... I've at least watched enough chunks from beginning to the end. Man, gone are the days where you had to actually pay attention to the TV guide and make it like an appointment. Now you can just stream it. <laughs> A good improvement, at the very least. We're talking about drinks, right? Are you hitting on me? If that's how you want to see it, let me see what I can get you. And make it big. Do you like them big, Miss Betty? It's not the size, but how you sell it. Gourmet food exists for that sole reason. I'm sure there's a really lewd joke I could make, but... <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Wise words. I should go by flavor, not by actual name. Piano woman. Why not? Three, four, five. Double it up. Oh. Not the direction I thought that was going. <laughs> yeah, just like, I'm sure I can come up with a joke for that, but uh, let's not and say I did. Let's go with the Blue Fairy, because that's apparently better to mix. One, six, seven, eight. One, two, and let's just put the rest with Carbatrine. All aged, mixed, 
blue fairy for the blue lady. Here. Thanks. You know, I'm curious. What's the weirdest client you've ever gotten? I, uh, I guess technically Dorothy, the sex worker droid. I wouldn't be able to tell you. There's many kinds of weird. Pick the first one that comes to mind. Well, there was this one guy that spent 30 minutes arguing with himself before ordering. That's not that weird. He came in wearing a Velociraptor mask and wouldn't stop screaming. He left humming Moonlight Sonata afterwards. Oh, yeah, that's weird. At least he left a nice tip. Speaking of anecdotes, can I ask what's your story with the enhancements? Why the interest? Because it seems like a personal thing. It doesn't sound like a question of ethics. And honestly, I'm really bored. <laughs> sure, I can entertain you a bit. Back when I was a college freshman, some friends of mine decided to get their hands advanced. It was around the time we all started practicing surgery. They just wanted to bypass all the practice needed. Doctor Strange, eat your hearts out. So they hired the shady character who would supposedly hook him up. I only talked one of them out of it. The others went off with the guy and got their hands chopped off. This is one of those stories that end badly, I'm guessing. Yeah, four girls underwent the shady surgical procedure. Two lost their hands, one was less than arthritic mess, and the last died on the operation table. Fucking hell. You <laughs> Talk about a fucking shady and incompetent. Jesus. Also, that's almost impressive. That's almost impressive that you managed to die from a hand operation. And obviously bleeding out is a thing, and infection, but like... You'd figure out of the least... of the things to lop off. A hand would be the least likely to kill you if you do it right. You would think. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not too fond of enhancements. Especially if they're taken in an effort to avoid effort. This culture of become better automatically with enhancements really gets on my nerves. Mood. That story sounds familiar. Did that shady guy have a bleach mustache and tattooed black eyebrows? He also talked using an electrolarynx. You seen him? No, but I remember news about the police catching someone who was performing illegal surgeries. Never thought I'd meet someone affected by him. It's a small world, isn't it? <sighs> well, I guess I gotta check on the dogs to see if they're fine. Sure, I'll keep serving them booze. Thanks for sharing that story. Yeah, yeah. Aww. That's a shit name for a dog. Don't call dogs an accident. That's just cruel, man. And just for that, you're getting the depressed voice. Hey, man. Have you ever felt like Time is moving too fast. Tonight, I'm feeling like it's not moving by fast enough. Lucky you. Well, they say time feels like it's going by too fast. You're yeah, having a good time. What can I serve you? I want a bad touch. <laughs> Sorry. Coming right up. The dog wants a <laughs> bad touch. Uh, that's a terrible name for a dog. And I like how I'm going, accident is a terrible name for a dog. But I apparently have no qualms with worm fricker, dragon fucker, Bangkok bastard. They're just all bad names for a dog. <laughs> what weird name would you give your dog? <laughs> There's the question to the chat. Hopefully not accident. Otherwise, I may want to have words. <laughs> One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, all on rocks and mixed. Boop! Here you go. Have a good time out there. Maybe you're right. Thanks. Dog number five. Bartender. Hmm? One brand TD breeze. Depends on breed and color. Ah, fair enough. I need a brand TD. 
Brantini, six Adelheide, four, five, six, one, two, three, one Carmatrine, aged and mixed. Here. Excuse me, the beer mat's dirty. Sorry, I'll change it. Nah, leave it like that. It already ruined the Brantini anyway. Damn. Hey, bartender. Bartender. Ten bartender? Ta bender? Your job has a funny name. Y y you don't say. You're a cute bard. Enter. I swear I could just eat you up. Please don't. When did you get drunk? I've been a little dizzy for a while now, but it just properly kicked in. Oh, I hate that. It's like when you drink, uh, uh, spirit cocktails or, like, vodka and coke. You start off fine, and then it just hits you like a truck. It's like, oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the fun, that's the... I, that can either be the fun experience, or absolutely fucking awful. <laughs> also, also, some of the dogs invited me over for a drink. Except I'm not drunk. Right. Can you get me a small brand TD? I will definitely pay your money. But you don't have to pay me. Ah, oh, will you really buy me that drink? It was so lovely. Yeah, let's leave it at that. <laughs> ah, the joys of drunk. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Three pad delta and one carmatrine. Egg and mixed. Eight out of ten smug assholes would me recommend it. But the two busy being to smug assholes. The other two smug assholes are too smug to admit that they would recommend the Brantini. Yeah. Yeah, cause this is smaller than I thought. You're in no position to drink anything more than that thimbleful. Maybe you're right. Hey, what made you become a veterinarian? I love animals. They are so cute, so funny, so huggable! Very true. I love my doggos, Millie and Rufus. And man, I am gonna give them the hugest. Oh god, the loud music just gave me a bit of a sudden shock there. And when they get back from their holiday, I am going to give them the biggest hug and the biggest pat that they have ever seen. The best head pats. I want to keep them happy. That's why I became a veterinarian. It's not always easy. But the knowledge that I've helped these cute, cuddly, squishy animals lets me sleep like a baby at night. Lovely. Speaking of love, have you ever been in love, Ranberte? For those that saw the project, yes, she was. <laughs> Haven't we all been in love at some point in our lives? Why? I need advice, and you look like a nice person. Um, sure, thanks. Um, actually, it's about someone who's really focused on his job, so I figured you'd understand. I see. Still, what do you want to know? You need to know. How do you get the attention of someone like that? Of someone that's so hyper-focused on something, he disregards everything else. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, well, a good start would be talking to the purse to the man or woman we don't judge here uh in well it's a guy so obviously he <laughs> i'm just pretending this is attempting to give uh, relationship advice <laughs> taking an interest in what your potential partner is interested in is usually a good start <laughs> make him feel loved and special just like you would do with anyone else you sure he's like really really obsessed if he's a decent member of society. Yeah, I see no problem with that. I hope you're right. I'm fresh off a bake-up and I seriously need a hug. Oh yeah, how do I fix the fact that it's a guy? Beg your pardon? I'm not into guys, but this here is a guy. What do I do? 
Um, accept your bisexuality and move on? I don't know. Right, need to serve dogs, sorry. No need, we're leaving. Already? Don't worry, we'll come back tomorrow. R right. And dog. I mean, God! God! Dog, damn it. God damn it. Done for the day, I'm guessing? Yeah. Now you wanna get some insecticide or something to make sure we're not full of fleas. What does the health inspector think of this stunt? The health inspector is too afraid to come to this part of the city, so I assume he's fine with it. Right. Say, boss, you look tense. Really? Weird. So I'll call it a day here. Thank you for your hard work. Day three. Good evening. You look bummed, boss. Starting tomorrow, there'll be no more corgis in our bar. Why wouldn't I be sad? Maybe because starting tomorrow, there'll be no more corgis at the bar. <laughs> there are two kinds of people. One that like corgis and Jill. <laughs> Uh, speaking of dogs, what's your favorite dog breed? Oh, what was your favorite dog or pet that you had? <laughs> I wonder if the Shiba Appreciation Society might be interested in bucking us. One problem at a time, boss. Wait, I know someone from the Pomeranian Development Institute. One problem at a time. Still, you've been tense ever since Friday. Are you worried about Gil or something? Trust me, of all of my worries, Gil is the least of them. Put on some music and enjoy the day, won't you? Just keep it simple. Time to mix dogs and change drinks. Wait. Bartender, we meet again. Oh, Miss Betty. Hello. Deal. Dash Hound, not how Shard spell it. When in doubt, Google. Dash Hound. Dash Hound. I just got Hound. It didn't get the dash part of it. That sounds right. And Mr. Corgi Lover. Call me Deal. Deal? Deal? Deal. Wipe that satisfied look off your faces, you two. <laughs> what can I serve you today? I'll have a beer. I'm not the designated driver today, so get me a fringe weaver. Alright, coming right up. Flinge weaver and a beer. Von Edelhide and nine comma Six, seven, eight, nine. Egged and mixed. One flong weaver. And Von Beer. Von Edelhide, one, two. I keep calling saying Edelhide like Edelgard. <laughs> I should really put an actual uh, pronunciation for it. Probably Edelhide, thinking about it. Like Hade, instead of obviously Edelgard, which is E Del. E Del? Here. Thanks. Thank you. You seem distracted. Has having so many dogs finally gotten to you? No, well, yeah, but it's not that. My boss has been acting weird since Friday. Weird how? Romantic weird, drug addict weird, let's hope nobody finds the body in the fridge weird. I question why you know that there is a let's hope nobody finds the body in the fridge weird. For starters, that's a fact she only told me we're being booked moments before we opened. Plus she seems completely distracted or lost in her thoughts. Like you. Worse. Oh. She's not being herself, and that makes me wonder if something's going on. Like what? Do you want a human trafficking ring in the basement? No, we don't have a license for that. Excuse me, that- y y you can get a license for that? What? <laughs> That's the first time I've heard of this! Oh well, thinking about it too much is not part of my job. Can I ask you something about your job? Sure. I've always been curious. What does the BTC need in their bartenders? What do you need to study? 
They train you from scratch, so you don't need to study anything beforehand. What does the training involve? It's a lot of etiquette and regulation work. Most of that time, though, it's actually spent in simulations. Simulations? Different scenarios involving different chemical hazards, that sort of thing. I want you to be able to respond to every possible situation that might come up involving our ingredients. I mean, the chances for failure are really slim, but it's better to not take those chances. Understandable. I see. I'll be back with you guys in a bit, and let's attend to the other clients. Dogs, then. Oh, sure. Mr. Puff! They're chasing me, man! Who? The cabbages, man! The goddamn cabbages! My cabbages! They're everywhere! I want for my rump! Yeah, n n never mind. Can I get you anything to calm down? A big blue fairy would be nice! <laughs> the attack of the cabbages again, man! <laughs> eight Edel God. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One for Lamagama and a bunch of Karmatrine. But it says optional Karmatrine. You use it all. All where possible. Fuck. Because I fucked up the Flanagama. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Now, Karma Train. Here. Thanks! Very nice of you! It's his third bark day. Something the matter? More freaking a drink can't solve. Not sure about that, but sadly my job to preach sobriety. What do you want? Give me a gut punch. Okay. Don't literally punch him. Boop, 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 boop. Aged, mixed, mixed. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, you ever feel guilty for being born the wrong race? Oof. I got heavy. But what now? I've just been hearing so much about how we're racist. I'm wondering, are you racist? Not really. Do you feel like other corgis might be? Definitely, I mean. Well, we just had the Bangkok bastard in yesterday, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely not as bad as him. Then why worry? It's not like they're calling you racist. You shouldn't take generalizations personally. You might be right. Man, you should have seen the cutie I saw yesterday on the way home. She looked like a cat boomer. She was wearing a mini dress and had this prosthetic eye. Hey, we're referring to Stella. I feel like you're against people using prosthetics. I'm not against cute, though. Besides, I'm not against prosthetics. I am only against enhancements. I don't see a difference between the two. Alright, let me put it this way. If you lost an arm and replaced it with a mechanical arm that does exactly what the older one did, I'm okay with it. But if you lost your arm and replaced it with a gun-loaded super arm from hell... Someone's been playing too much Doom. That's something I'm not okay with. Even worse is if you decide to replace your arm because of fashion, or a whim, or to get better at some sport. That's completely not cool. That's the difference between a prosthetic and an enhancement. Replacement versus, a uh, enhancement. I'm of a similar opinion about Lilin replacing their factory parts for kicks. If you think that's going to be an easy way of getting better at something, you're in for a bad surprise. Well, I can see why you think that, but... What suggested to you that she had wasn't an enhancement? If she had bad eyesight, wouldn't that count as an enhancement, even if it fixes it? How does reparative work factor into your ideologies? They might be enhancements, but they also replace something faulty. Well, uh... He's got you there. <laughs> cough, cough! Enhancement! I'm wearing glasses! I have absolutely dog shit eyesight! <laughs> 
And when I say dog shit, I mean very dog shit. Not like legally blind, but basically, it'd be easy if I show my webcam. So, uh, basically, if I take my glasses off, you can, uh, roughly where my arm is, which is, like, roughly at the boundary line of my elbow, I can't see past that point. Like, anything past that point becomes blurry to me. Yeah. <laughs> I literally just took that off to confirm. But yeah, like... My glasses up as it is now, I literally cannot reach out. I can just about make out my face, but hey, that's, uh, <laughs> I, I can recognize my own face, I would hope. I can obviously see my logo, because that's big, but yeah. That's about the rough description of how my uh, short-sightedness works. It's literally just, like, Everything becomes blurry after a point. Unless, like, it's super fucking big. Like, probably a size 72 big. If I wanted to stand a chance at being functional without glasses. Well, uh... Oh, shit. <laughs> Forgot to change the screen. <laughs> there we go. Damn it! Stop making sense, you piece of scrap! You're weakening my resolve. Having fun? Oh, bartender. That was fast. There seems to be less dogs out here today. At least dogs that want to drink. Yeah, some of them eat their tickets. <sighs> Lovely. I'll be the one dealing with that later. Say, what's your take on the whole enhancement discussion, bartender? My mom had a saying. Anyone can make a chandelier out of their asses, which somehow means your body, your choices. I'm not quite sure I get that. <laughs> if they're not hurting anyone, I don't see the point in hating them. See, Betty? Hey, let's say I automatically hate anyone who has an enhancement. Me being against something isn't the same as me being against someone. Not some 12-year-old blindly hating someone because of something like that. Maybe you should practice what you preach. What does that mean? I fear retaliation, so I'm not saying enough of words. <laughs> what does that mean? I fear I've made a mistake here. Are you two gonna order anything? I'm fine right now. She's drinking mine, actually. All right, call if you need anything else. Sure. Let's see. Ow! So much for avoiding retaliation. Poop Peter. God damn it. You're not gonna believe me. I was in the bathroom and this other dog was looking at me from the top of the sink. You mean the mirror? No, another dog. I see, what can I serve you? You're not gonna do about anything about that of a dog on top of the sink? I'm sure he doesn't want to hurt anybody. Don't worry. I hope you're right. Well, I want something really sweet. This pup wants something sweet. Something really sweet for the sweet doggo. Three, four. One, two, and as usual, when it says optional, fill that sucker up. <laughs> Boop, boop, boop. Here you go. Thanks. Please think about that thing with the other dog on top of the sink. I will, don't worry. Well then. That was quick. Like I said, there aren't too many dogs today. When I heard someone booked us for three days, I expected more of an attendance. While you were gone, this fella said that the bleeding Jane is better than a pile driver. Please, prove him wrong. All I'm saying is, is that I don't see the... Point in drinks that feel more like a kick in the mouth than a beverage. <laughs> Fair enough. Each their own. What do you think, bartender? Do you think there's any point discussing non-alcoholic drinks at a bar? <laughs> in my opinion, people who order a back touch always make me giggle like an idiot, though. That's not an opinion. That's a statement. Oh well, please serve as either pile drivers or bleeding chains. We'll let you decide which one is better. Power driver and or bleeding Jane. Two of any of those. 
So, shall we, uh... Uh, flip two coins? <laughs> just for funsies? Yeah, why not? So, heads or tails, we serve either or. Heads, we serve one of each. Uh, tails, we serve uh, two of the same. And then we'll heads or tails, plyle, drive, plyle, pile, drivers, or bleeding jeans. Heads or tails? Tails, so we're serving uh, two of a kind. Heads we do pile driver, tails we do bleeding Jane. Head to tails. Tails this time. We are serving bleeding Jane. <laughs> Apparently the coin really enjoyed tails. So one one, two, three, one, two, three. All blonde. Say the name of this mirror. F say the name of this mirror three times in the drink, in front of a drink, and you'll look like a fool. I would agree. If you s say the name of the mirror three times in front of the drink, you will sound like a fool. Boop. Fuck. Oh, I did karma tree. <laughs> Oops. Got it right the first time, but fucked it up the second. Temp to. <laughs> and blend it. Here. Yes. Yeah, take his side. See if I care. How did you two end up discussing that? Well, it started when I told this guy that I wasn't as crazy about the idea of working just for corgis. Why don't you like corgis? They're cute and fluffy and funny and they just, like, make you smile. All dogs do that. Except that one time when I almost got attacked by a husky, but that was an exception, not the norm. That was a shit dog owner. Tell me one interesting thing about them. Legends say they were created by a fairy and their breed was raised to fight dragons. Uh, judging by the name of two of them, I don't think they were fighting, per se. I think they were doing a bit of a, you know, that scene, that one scene in Trek. Yeah. I don't think I need to elaborate further. Oh, you have to be kidding. No, actually, I heard that one too. Really? Still, I can't see why you're so tired of them. So no, maybe because I only ever deal with them at their worst? You've only seen them in their happy state. I'm the one running feces samples and unclogging their sphincters. They eat their own as dental floss. I be their veterinarian, but they treat me more like a mom, and not in a good way. It's like being a gynecologist. I don't want to know the correlation between gynecology and being a veterinarian for a dog. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I'ma just skip that part. <laughs> uh, at least they are cute issues. Depends. A gynecologist can't pick clients by age or preferences. Ugh. That would be very gross if a gynecologist could do that. I'd just be gross if any kind of doctor could do that. That would, ju that would just be gross, man. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah, let's just... Keep the talk on veterinarian. <laughs> like I say, I'll stick with being a software engineer. <laughs> I'll take fixing code issues over <laughs> fixing dog butts, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. Still, I don't think it's so much that I'm tired of them. It's that I'm tired of you being so obsessed with them. So, had your bets. Was the guy that Betty was interested in deal? <laughs> I'm not obsessed. I'm 
passionate. You sleep with a corgi plushie and have a well... A, a, I said a well. You have a well dedicated to photos you've taken at the company. It's just an entire well. You just go down it and it's just a bunch of corgi photos. I meant to say wall. If anything, saying shrine would have been a bit more closer. I'm really passionate? Too much passion can become an issue, you know. True. <laughs> Speaking of issues, did you talk with the director about the whole cardigan conflict? I was gonna do that tomorrow when they're all together, but I still don't see why I should be the one doing it. For starters, they don't take me too seriously. Understandable, I don't take you too seriously either. I mean, in the end, they're still dogs. They still need someone with a strong commanding voice. Are you saying I have a naggy voice? No, not your voice, just your entire demeanor. So I have a naggy demeanor? I'm assuming you two are talking about the whole race conflict. Yeah, this is hurting them more than I might think. The company might actually collapse at this rate. Which is terrible, because a couple of these dogs' families are dependent on their paychecks. Doesn't that count as unethical and unusual treatment of animals? It's a bit of a legal grey area. The dogs are doing it willingly, after all. Even if they weren't doing it uh, willingly, the dogs aren't actually being mistreated or exploited. In fact, the company's pretty relaxed. Speaking of relaxed, how's Jurgen doing? He's fine, still complaining about his back. Still unwilling to take his medicine, he says he's not that weak. Who's this Jurgen guy? My guardian. I passed the test years ago, but I couldn't leave him. That's actually commonplace, isn't it? Lilim being unable to leave the guardian because they feel too much like family. Now, to be fair, people can attach to many things. Some even get upset with inanimate objects. My grandpa left his car more than any of his sons. The ones will, whose will left all his earthly possessions to his car, right? Yeah, that one. How do you become a Lilim Guardian? You fill a form at the Artificial Intelligence Council. Then they do a background check. If they deem you useful, they'll give you authorization. You give it a week's notice before they give you all the data about the Lilim you'll be taking care of. You'll have to watch over it until they can pass three different personality tests. If the Lilim wants to stay with you, and after that, that's your problem. So it's like adoption and the lottery all rolled into one. They do that to diversify the possible outcomes. Two Lilim can be at the same model, but they'll grow differently depending on their guardians. What if something happens to the guardian? A new guardian can appeal to the council, stating they're more than fit for the position than the original. This happens when a guardian has become unavailable in some way. Or because you can back up claims of neglect or maltreatment. You spit out all that information like it's hard coded in you. I worked in that department for some time before going to the STC. It's almost a reflex. Are you interested in becoming a guardian, bartender? I don't know. I'm just a nerd when it comes to AIs in general. That's, that's, that's fair. The money they give you for it is not that great, though. I see. Well, time to check on the dogs. Money Shredder! <laughs> What's in here, punk? Sorry, I didn't mean to call you a punk, it's just... I was chasing my tail and now I'm too hyper to control myself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just give me anything. This dog wants anything, I wonder if it's safe to give him something sweet. <laughs> uh, time to give him something sweet. <laughs> We haven't done a piano woman. We'll go with that one. Five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, age, mix. There we go. This is good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Ah! Huh. No. See, I can see the value of other dog races. Like, Pomeranians. Those are nice, but they aren't corgis. Well, yeah, I can understand that. Do you remember that cute girl from yesterday I mentioned earlier? Yeah. 
The white knight that was with her, she wasn't half bad either. I mean, it was obvious that a tapestry of muscles was hidden under her armor. I prefer more delicate looking girls, so. You can appreciate how something looks, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily your thing. And you, bartender? Me what? Which dark race do you prefer? That's not the question I was expecting. Not much of a dark person, actually. Do you have any pets? A cat named Four, yes. He's just a stray I rescued. Do you like rescuing girls, too? I'm sure I should be making a witty retort right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say no. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, I always thought that the rescue fantasy was universal. Why well, call it Four? Four is a little I met some time ago that... N never mind. Pretty lame name if you ask me. Better than calling it Asshat. Well, you know, Bangkok Buster, Dragon Fucker, Money Shredder, Poop Eater, Accidents, there's many names. Four is better than a lot of names. I am glad I wasn't fucking reading that at the time, because I would have just broken down and left over there. Fuck. I just saw the next bit text, so I was just like, oh, there's going to be a bad joke in here. I bet when you and Four play, it's quite the sight, eh? Four space play. He's so li <laughs> lively. Sometimes I fear Four shadows my presence entirely. You guys want to lose consciousness that much? You really need to calm it down with the whole pun hating stuff, Betty. But to move away from this whole foreground. <laughs> Terrible, but a little better than foreplay. <laughs> what is this rescue fantasy you mentioned before? You know, the one where wayward dangerous souls redeem themselves through the power of love. The bad boy who turns away a life of crime. The drug addict girl who lives on the streets and turns tricks until she found a good man worth changing for. It's corny romance cliches 101. Well, you're the one with the shelf full of old lady romance novels, I'll trust you on this. Hey, Fabio the 13th is a national treasure. You don't even like guys. I read all those novels. They let you put yourself in the place of the main character quite easily. Even if said main character is a muscular man, I see no problem. Just, what is your self-image? If I can add something else, what is it? Why do you hate puns so much? What did puns ever do? I see you with that gun near. <laughs> Many people cringe at puns, you know. That's just the sign that the pun was good. <laughs> A good pun makes you cringe. A great pun makes you laugh or go, That was actually kind of clever. Yeah, but you react like you have a vendetta against them. They made me feel stupid. Um, what? When I was a kid, everyone in my house had a penchant for making puns at the drop of a hat. I was the only one who couldn't get them. Years later, I finally got them, and they weren't that funny! It made me feel stupid! All in the name of some terrible joke that wasn't even funny in the first place! I've said this so many times, I might as well make a recording, but you need to chill out, Betty. I am chilling out. Just because I complain about stuff doesn't mean I'm not relaxed. I'm not sure that's how it works. Trust me, when I'm tense and angry, you'll know it. I fear the fault. Anyway, I'll go check in on the dogs. I'm supposed to be their doctor, and they are being suspiciously quiet. Be careful. Want anything else? I'll have a bloom light, actually. Make that two. I feel like if you just made a big bloom light, that would uh, fill. So puns, yay or nay? <laughs> I was expecting just another gun emote there. <laughs> for Adelheid, Fun Paddle Delta, two for Nakama, 
and free commentary in all on the rocks and next get there four one two three I forgot the aging <laughs> opinion on pun gun try that again four one, one, two, one, two, three, eight, ice, and mix. Boop. Here. Thanks. Say, you two seem to get along quite well. Well, when you're only sentient humanoids in the entire company, it kinda happens. Sentient? We have a couple of test mannequins and cardboard cutouts, so... I see. See, there's more to it than that, though. I mean, even if you two are the only ones of your kind, you can still hate each other. Well, I guess I'm one of the few that can stand Betty. She's a really nice person, but she doesn't sugarcoat things. Yeah, I can see that. You should see her treating those dogs. They become so patient and understanding, even if it's only for a little while. Dogs call, don't call a mom to mock her. Can dogs mock people? I don't know. Even if it's only for a little while. You were eavesdropping? So you can say nice things once in a while. You say it like I'm the aggressive one here. It's nice hearing people say good things about you once in a while, you know? You should take your own advice. Maybe some other time. I'm not a hog box. Anything happened? A dog in the bathroom got angry at his reflection and on the mirror and charged into it. Luckily, nothing bad happened. It just made a dog very confused. How the hell did I get on top of the sinks? They yeah, are surprisingly agile, even with those stubby little legs. <laughs> it reminds me of my dog, Rufus, who literally barks at any dog. He doesn't bark at his own reflection in a mirror, but if he sees his own reflection, like, in the glass, he will growl and bark at it. It's hilarious, but also like, really, Rufus? This is it's you. You're barking at yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, I ordered you this. Ah, thanks. By the way, Betty, how's Veronica? She we broke up last month. What? Well, things were not going so well. We got too used to one another. Everyone was starting to become routine. We decided to break up before things got bitter. And why didn't you tell me that before? Why? Did you want your turn at the Betty Mobile? <laughs> I don't know, I guess I just didn't want to trouble you. After a while, it stopped feeling like it was something relevant to say. <sighs> Please don't do that again. Try trusting me. Yeah, you're right. You know what bothers me? I thought after asking someone's health, always feels like you're walking on a floor full of glass shards. Just don't check the mirror. There's always this chance that the other person is not okay or even dead. What sounds as a legitimately fun moment can go sour. Yeah, you're right. Sorry for not trusting you, you piece of scrap. Don't worry, I understand why you did it. Hey, now let me think about it. You shall hang out with us a lot, bartender. Well, dogs can only be so interesting. And besides, I haven't been as many dogs today. Is my presence unwanted? Not at all, especially since you're the one bringing the booze. You're like those cab drivers that like to chat all the way, but you smell better than most of them. Thank you. Funny thing is that we are unofficially associated with a local taxi line. But the ones that send drunkards to their homes. You seem to really, really like talking to your clients, like it's the best part of your job or something. It kinda is. I used to sit around in crowded places like malls or bars and just think to myself, each and every person here has a story. It's a humbling experience. Everyone has dreams, fears, and loved ones. If you dig deep enough, you realize that the gap between two random people isn't as big as you think it is. In fact, it's quite small. And in this job, you get to hear all kinds of stories. Some people just blurt it all out, some do it while drunk. To know that no matter how similar they might be at first glance, no two people are alike. It's fascinating. You could be a powerful information broker with all that knowledge. Nah, not interested. 
I like to see myself more as a friendly ear than someone you need to be wary of. I guess there's still decent folks out there. I'm not decent. You're critically obsessed with dogs! <laughs> I'll go check if there's any dogs who want something. Sure. Go ahead. Gruff bucket! Quick! A beer! Quick old beer. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two three, four. Mix. Boop. Beer. Here you go. Here. Quite in a hurry. X now. Boom! Why did you break the glass? I made breakfast. Breakfast. Get it? Because you made the drink. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, that didn't click. <laughs> the fact they said it slowly and the fact that the pun didn't click is bad. <laughs> uh, that one would fall under a bad pun. Especially considering, if you have to explain the bad pun, that it's not a good bad pun. That was more funny, because I just realized how slow that was. <laughs> Go. Tough crowd. Suddenly I understand I hate the puns. Hey, Pat Render! Yeah? <laughs> Your job has a funny name. Ah, the... I feel a sense of deja vu. You don't say. How is she already drunk? She drank way less than she did last night. Yeah, but she drank a bottle before coming here. Why? I wish I knew. It's an example of our alcohol tolerance, though. So. Rah, Denter. I want to make a test to my friend the robot here. Probably the only person, robot, thing that could stand my yapping for more than half an hour. Without him, my job would be far times more boring. My life two times more meaningless. Cheers! You're not holding a drink. I am your one, Ben Trader. <laughs> you my job. I need a beer. A big one. Ben Trader. Someone trading Ben's. <laughs> I like those emotes, but near. Yeah. <laughs> big beer. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Time to get drunk. All right, cheers! I said cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Good! Grumpy when sober and a sweetheart when drunk. Seems like she's been like this since her university years. When I get drunk, I get weirdly good at Super Smash Bros. Seriously, I don't know why that is. It just seems like alcohol just unlocks my intuition more. Generally, most some of my Smash moments are just like, how the fuck did I pull that off whilst drunk? You yeah, could sound like those were a decade ago. <laughs> I can understand liking the taste of alcohol, but what's so good about getting drunk? First of all, I'm not drunk. You're too happy. I'm a happy person. When drunk. Hmm. Anyway, it's just something you can't explain. You just like it. Your body needs it. Craves it. That, my friend, is a symptom of addiction. You should probably get that checked out. That's called being an alcoholic. Exactly. <laughs> I prefer the term alcohol enthusiast. Anyway, humans actively look for things that make them feel lightheaded. Why else would they leave some poison in potentially poisonous foods like that weird balloon fish thing? Puffer fish? Why would they eat spicy foods or drink fermented milk? 
Are we referring to cheese when we're talking about fermented milk? I feel like that's a cheese reference. <laughs> Why would they eat spicy food? I don't know. It's not like I bought a bean boozled with spicy uh, things yesterday and ate two freaking Carolina Reaper beans like it was nothing and got hit with the after effects like five or so hours after. Seriously, how crazy does somebody need to be to say, Hey, let's see this. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. Have you even found medicine amongst all that junk? True. I'm pretty sure that was how, uh, cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt. I was right. I did forget yogurt, though. Bram was just trying to think, like, what food is fermented milk? And the only thing that came to mind was, like, cheese. Kind of forgot about yogurt. Oh, now that just reminded me, now that you just mentioned yoga, it just reminded me of this infinite yogurt glitch. It's a stupid YouTube shot where basically uh, you get this specific brand of yogurt, uh, you save one scoop of it, uh, you do a bit of setup with some milk, once it's all settled down, you put the bacteria, as in the yogurt itself, into that milk and then let it settle and set for a little while and then boom you've got more yogurt but when i think about it wouldn't that yogurt be sufficiently weaker compared to the uh yogurt you've got or would it just generate well i guess if it makes more of the bacteria then i guess it would be the same strength i might need to experiment with that for science <laughs> The one that is- Hey, penicillin! <laughs> I'm just talking about that. The one that offended penicillin was probably the worst of them all. Fair enough, but see, that's proof you're drunk. If you were sober, you would just say, Hell if I know. Silly robot. Now that I think about it, what kind of robot are you? Lilim. Lilim, oh, it always sounds too filly. I, uh, really, I'm uh, getting into that uh, drunken lass uh, act. I can't fucking pronounce the word feminine. Unlimited yogurt words. I guess if it's multiplying the bacteria, like, if it's, if more bacteria being reproduced, then yeah, I could probably see that working without, you know, making the taste be absolutely weak as shit. Because I, I, I can believe it works, it was just my questioning of, wouldn't the flavour of that yoghurt be... Well, assuming it's not, like, flavoured. Well, assuming if it's, like, plain yoghurt, I guess that theory doesn't really matter. And it's like, it's plain yoghurt, it's not gonna taste like anything. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway. Lilim always sounds too feminine. Feminine, I'll just lean into that. Okay, then. What manner of piece of scrap are you? You don't know? I never cared, but now I'm curious. Oh, well, you won't remember it tomorrow. I'm a DT-01D, an old, a DT-old. A social development robot. Is that like the DFC-72s? No, no. DFC-72s are designed to be as physically human as possible in order to blend in with humans better. Like, uh, Detroit become human. My line is more tailored for resilience. We are work, Lilith. Why must you be cursed to only one destiny on the moment you're born? You can do whatever you want, silly robot. Follow your dreams! I know. I'm already doing it. Being created are hardwired for one duty only means you're more adept at certain things. Giving robots freedom of choice, that's the whole purpose of the ADN law. It's like humans in a way. You get your own specializations. Yeah, you know, you'd say you're resilient, but you don't look the part. True, I never upgraded my muscles, but I can stand up to 200 degrees Celsius without breaking the sweat. Ugh, the water inside me just boiled at the sound of that. Lilim can sweat? Cooling agents, yes. 
Oh, Mother, this is all special to me. No matter what kind of robot you are. Lilim, must be nice, I know, right? Oh, what a what a piece of shit you are. You can have special, how come it isn't legal to marry a dog yet? Excuse me, what? If humans are allowed to ro marry robots, oh, Lilim, I meant Lilim, <laughs> you should be able to marry dogs too. Um, Render, that's me, I think. This guy here wants to bang a dog. Mark him. Excuse me? I do not. I was just saying, if humans were now allowed to marry Lilim, why shouldn't they be allowed to marry animals? Because, first of all, they're not humanoids. What about monkeys, then? And now you want to bang a monkey? I do not. And second of all, I'm getting a phone call. I need to take a quick break. One moment. Oh, I just got miscalled. What the hell? Uh. Oh, FaceTime. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. Good excuse for an ad break after banging a monkey, I guess. <laughs> that, was, that was a weird choice of words. Anyway, back in a moment. I seem to be getting really lucky with my phone call timing, because that just lasted exactly the length of time of the ad break. <laughs> uh, also, yay, I got a new achievement. <laughs> Hope y'all are enjoying the show. It's nice to be streaming for a, a bit longer and at a more sane time for a change. <laughs> I am getting a good laugh revisiting through the prologue and Anna. Well, and soon to be Anna. Anywho. But it's just for a day, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break after that, and then we'll do, uh, Anna. And second of all, dogs, just like many other animals, can't give you consent. But look at these dogs! Sure, they have the cognitive ability of seven-year-olds, but they can talk, drink, booze, and argue. Same could be said of a fucking eighteen-year-old. I'm pretty sure the legal age of consent in most states is like 18. I'm fairly sure. <laughs> I am not finishing. I am not uh, finishing that sentence because that's not something I want heard in context. <laughs> that's not a quote I want to have said out of context. Uh, and that's coming from me who said, fuck me sideways, CG, DBG, daddy. <laughs> I draw a line at some quotes. <laughs> Other countries, however... Yes, I know the UK is 16, if I remember rightly. Might change to 18. No, I'm fairly sure it's 16. Yeah, I remember in high school I made a joke about that. Uh, when someone turns 16. Anywho. We have a regular here. Brazil and Japan are 14. Woof. That's... I, I, I question that. <laughs> I, I, I question that a lot. Whoa. <laughs> we have a regular here who would be delighted to hear that. Stop it! Amber, Lilim human marriage is rarely sanctioned. As does the Lilim achieve full sentience. Even then, they use marriage as a way to evolve the collective source. Besides, dogs don't really love us that way. Trying to apply human ideas to a dog is like... Trying to feed vegetables to a carnivore, you get me? I wonder if there's any, like, instances of... Animals who are naturally carnivores eating vegetables. As in, animals who are naturally carnivorous. I'm not talking like omnivores, because obviously that is the term of those that eat both. Uh, I just want, it just makes me wonder if there's a story like that somewhere. Maybe in Florida. <laughs> Says the ex vegetarian. Why are you only so smart when drunk? I'm not drunk! Uh, anyways, if you want to screw a dog or a chimp, go ahead. 
Just don't bring marriage or infants into the whole deal. Deal? You decide to make it about your end of the. Uh, no. No. Cease. <laughs> I do not want this on recording. <laughs> but yes, please seek some mental help if you do think that. <laughs> And again. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I laugh, but that is a serious matter. Please do get checked if you do think that. <laughs> well, thank God. And then why do you suddenly start talking about dog human marriage? It's just, I was thinking about all these dogs in tuxedos, and we started picturing a dog in a bridal dress. I mean, just try and picture that. And I'm the drunk one. Hey, I'm not drunk. Why would I say that? Then again, when you get drunk, you only get dizzy. You have a limit, as in a limit for how much you can drink before passing out. No, I just get disoriented to the point I'm effectively useless, but I never pass out. Maybe if I pass out, I wouldn't have to deal with all the shit that follows. I just have to wait at least 24 hours before the effects pass. One has to wonder why they gave all these human flaws to Lilim. I read something about that. That's by giving Lillian the same kind of weaknesses humans have that would develop the same way humans do. So that's why they also bite their lips randomly when eating. Oh, I hate when that happens. Seems like it. But it makes me wonder. Exactly how anatomically correct are you? That's something I know and you don't. Hmm. Didn't want anything else to drink? Yeah, I want... Nothing. You're drunk enough as it is. Oh, my dad. You can't tell me what I can and can't do. Beatrice Albert, stop drinking right now. Yes, Mom. Now, go sleep in the car. We are almost done here. But, Mom. <laughs> go. Hmm. Hi, that nurter. Bye, Miss Betty. Actually worked. I'm actually impressed that worked. I didn't know she wouldn't remember anything tomorrow. I'd be afraid of retaliation. Although I'm curious, why do you call her Miss Betty? Betty it makes her sound like a teacher or something. Etiquette? I don't know. Well, also, something about her that makes it feel right to call her that. Maybe it's the forehead. I see. Well, I gotta get things ready. If you excuse me. Good luck. Hey, wife and lover. Little clo little better than Wyvern Fricker. Damn it. Well, everyone's safe in the cap. You're taking our leave, Bart Ender. Thank you properly on providing such great service on short noitus. Noitus. That's my job. Um, you were interesting too. Well, thank you. I got to tell all our associates about the wonders of this place. Thank you. And please come again. We sure will. So my regards to Miss Betty. Gladly. See you later, then. Bye. All done? Yep. Seems like we got some new regulars. Yeah, it'd be nice if they came back. All that was still here when they want to come back. You've been acting out weird all weekend, boss. Are you okay? I am, but the bar is not. What do you mean? Well, I guess you have the right to know. The BT sent me a message on Friday. Valhalla hasn't been bringing in as much income these last few months. It means we have risk of being wiped off the map. And that was the prologue. I think technically you're supposed to play that before playing the actual game, but during my first run I didn't play the prologue until after. And they basically uh, very quickly expose it anyway, so. Oh shit, where's my cursor? There we go. And that was the prologue to Valhalla, the pro the precursor before the uh, main story. Uh, it wouldn't be a Valhalla game if we didn't get right at the end with something horrendously politically incorrect that I will <laughs> refuse to say. <laughs> uh, still just as funny as I remembered it. <laughs> right. I know I just took an ad break, but... I'm going to take another short one just while I go to the bathroom, and we will uh, play Anna, this one. Which is another part that happened, I think, 
before the prologue, it's the prequel to the prequel of the main game. Oh yes, I will be right back after these commercial messages and a bathroom break. Ugh, needed that. And I am back a mundo. Okay, cool. I just marked it as Valhalla, so that works for me. Right, let me just... Thank you! Hope y'all are enjoying the show so far. If you like what you see, consider following and sharing me getting a name out there. It does help a lot. I usually stream Friday and Saturday's late evening, but we occasionally get a bit of a one-off where I get to stream at an actual sane time. Now, let me just change that description to Anna. Small FYI, depending on how the internet goes, I may potentially need to stop after Anna. Uh, my brother's at work, so he'll be joining a meeting in about half an hour. I'm fairly certain we'll be done with the main bulk of the show. So, we'll, if he says there's a problem, it may need to end early. Demo. Monday, December 12th. Dot dot dot. <sighs> Man, such a slow night. At least I'm not serving dogs. Only this would be where a dog shows up, like a cheap punchline. I guess not. Speaking of dogs, I wonder why the hell's Gil? Bored? Ah! Sorry, did I wake you up? I wasn't sleeping, my eyes were open. You went to college, right? You know having your eyes open means nothing. Don't worry, I don't blame you. It's been a really long time since we had such a slow night. But I think the last time we had a night this slow was before you started working here. Really? Yeah, it happened when Roberts was still working here. Who? My first employee. The poor idiot bought a levitation pro potion and threw himself off a building. Oh. As it turned out, the potion actually worked. Come again? He started rising in the air and couldn't stop. They later found his body smeared across the nose of a commercial fight that was on its way to Kenjivania. But anyway, well, that did not go the direction I thought it was. Should you really dismiss that so easily? I didn't have a single client that night, I even lost soul asking for direction, but then suddenly a kid shows up. He was obviously underage, but I was bored, so I decided to let him order something. I gave him one carmatrine free drink. And if I was letting him order, I wasn't about to give alcohol to an underage boy. And when the time came for him to pay his tab, he realized he didn't have enough money. He then yanked his shirt over head, started screaming he's a ghost, and tried to escape. So I kicked him so hard he flew at the bar and told him ghosts shouldn't feel pain. <laughs> Boss, did you really kick an underage kid? Of course not! I just gave him a warning and make him wash a couple of dishes. I even thought that for a moment that I kick a young, innocent child hurts me to no end, you know? <laughs> anyway, just keep it up. Some more show up sooner or later. I sure hope so. Hold on. Come to think of it, aren't Gil's checks made out to Robert? No. <laughs> <sighs> well, at least that story killed a couple of minutes. I think I'll... I don't know, some of the glasses here or something. Huh? We have a fedora-shaped glass? Um... Anybody here? Ah, sorry, I'll be right the... Ouch! Anna! Uh, uh, are you okay? I'm fine, yeah. Welcome to Valhalla, what can I get you? Um... Something wrong? Are you sure you're old enough to drink? Well, seeing how I'm old enough to eat solid food, I'm gonna guess that drinking won't be a problem. You know that's not what I meant. Yeah, yeah, I'm old enough to drink. I turned 21 not too long ago, actually. What the huh? Glitchy. Still don't believe me? What do you need me to give you? I must be sleep deprived or something. What's this deja vu feeling, though? It's fine, don't worry. What can I get you? I feel like having a sugar rush. Sure, coming right up. 
one, two, one, mix. Yeah, thanks. Hold on, this doesn't have any alcohol, does it? Nope. You really think I'm underage, don't you? Yep. I'll have you know, I'm old enough to get pregnant. After... <sighs> That's sadly not relevant here. Ugh. On second thought, this is actually good. Uh, I mean, don't underestimate me. I really think I'd look that young. I do, but not young enough to be considered underage. Why won't you give me alcohol? I wanted to mess with you. Mess with a client? Do you usually do that? Only if it looks like they might take it in their stride. Still, why are you so angry at the idea that I might think you look young? That's... I mean, the only people that don't like being mistaken for someone younger are young people. But to be fair, you still look older than 95% of our regulars. I would mean you serve people... You serve drinks to people who look like they're 13 years old or something. Yep. Eh? Alright, let's get this out of the way. Please show me your ID. Sure. Anna Graham. Date of birth, 6th of December, 2050. Hashtag. Seems everything is order, Miss Anna Graham. Anna Graham? Why have I heard that name before? Go ahead. Just try to make a joke I haven't heard yet. Well, I was thinking of Anna Graham, but... I'll politely refuse. No, I'm serious. Go ahead. People make think it's too easy, so they never make jokes about my name. I'm still going to politely refuse. You're no fun. So, what's your name, Miss Bartender? My name? You saw my name. I have the right to know yours. Fair enough. I'm Jill. Jill what? Just Jill. Yeah, but what's your full name? Just call me Jill. Fine, I'll just pretend your Jill is a way of saying your name is actually Johanna Ignatia Laurent Lone. What a name. <laughs> what a... what a complicated name. Also, wait to... <laughs> actually, I'll shorten it to Jill. Whatever floats your boat. Say, Joe, this place looks awfully desolate. Joe, she says. It's been a slow day. A really, really slow day. Actually glad you showed up. I was growing bored as hell. I mean, not like we're always bustling with activity, but this is unusual, even for you. So I take it that this isn't a popular place then. We have our regulars, but we're not like the bars in the main street. Still, I like this place. It's comfy and I don't know. It makes me feel safe. Weird, I mean, I feel that way too, but this place usually gives off the opposite impression. Can't blame them though, this isn't exactly the best part of the city. That's a shame, I really liked how isolated this place feels. You can't hear the sounds of the city in here, it's nice. But then again, you could say I have some experience with isolated places, so it might just be nostalgia. Nostalgia, huh? Speaking of coming in here, now that I think about it, you didn't ask for my ID when I first came in. Why didn't you do it if you were so suspicious? Well, firstly, I was bored. Figures. And second, I felt like you were of legal age. Um, how? We've had a lot of kids coming in thinking they get away without in a drink, but they're too nervous or jumpy. I don't usually give drinks to kids like that. They don't know what they're dealing with. Well, if they're not like that, but still underage, if they at least look like they're above legal age, I'd be able to live myself, I guess. I don't give them anything if I know they're still kids, but hey, I'm bound to be fooled sometime. So I'm guessing I wasn't jumpy. Yep. I see. Hey, sure, now that you know I can drink legally, can I get another one? What do you want? Hmm. Give me something sweet, sure. Is it bad I kind of want to just give another sugar rush, but with no karma tree? <laughs> Just to be a dick. <laughs> Sweet drink. Sparkle Star. One, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aged, mixed, boop. One sweet drink. Thanks. You know, if all drinks are like this, I'd be afraid of turning into an alcoholic. Please don't joke about that. 
How can you say that? You're a bartender. Bartender doesn't want her clients to become alcoholics. Just like how personal trainers don't want trainees to turn into steroid junkies. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. Still, this one's really nice. Hey Joe, do you drink? I suppose, yeah. It'd be weird for a bartender not to drink, you know. I don't know, I've met dentists with bad teeth. Bartenders who don't drink totally would make sense. I'd say bartenders who don't drink would probably make a bit more sense than dentists with bad teeth. Though, then again, I'd be su you'd be surprised, I guess. That's silly, it'd be like a vegan chef running a barbecue restaurant. Again. Not that strange, vegan barbecue. You think? Yeah, I mean, it's not a matter of whether you can eat or drink whatever it is that you're making. It's more like, why do it if you don't like it? Huh. Yeah, I guess that's true. That is might have bad too, but he could still like working in dentistry. But why bother bartending if you don't like alcohol? See? Hmm. Something wrong? I just noticed you haven't said my name yet. I haven't... what? Except for when you read my ID no, you still haven't said my name. Yeah, well, I've called out yours like a gazillion times now. The wrong name, though. Well, I have a need to say your name. Come on, humor me. Say my name. Say my name. Say my name. Say my name. <sighs> Anna. One more time. Anna. Yes. Now, one more time. Whoa. Anna? Glitchy. Happen again. Maybe I need glasses. There's a feeling again. Did I see someone glitch out in the past? Oh, come on! Why do you want me to say your name? I like hearing people call me by name. Feels personal and fuzzy. Yeah, but asking people to say your name like that, it's a bit quirky? Creepy. I don't know about that. There's a certain someone who would wake up in the morning saying my name. Your name is important. Once you know someone's name, the gap between that person and you disappears. Once you give names to things, you start seeing them as important memories of the family. Members of the family. The so what if it's creepy? It's so nice. Not calling me Joe and use my name then. Say, Anna, can I ask you something? Call me my name, so sure. About your arm. What about it? Oh yeah, I'm lacking one. Did saying the word creepy remind you of its absence? Actually, I've been wanting to ask about it since you came in. You have to be uncomfortable for a second. I'm trying to get a rise out of you. Sheesh. So, what is it? How did I lose it? If it's not too personal. It isn't. I'm actually proud of the tale. Eh? Why? You're looking at a proud survivor of nanomachine rejection. Really? I thought that was something doctors detected while a fetus is still in the womb. Yes and no. There are actually two types of nanomachine rejection syndrome. The first one is the most common, they usually detect it while you're still a fetus. That's when they turn you into a cat boomer. The other one can sometimes appear in your teenage years, it's incredibly rare, but it's still possible. Kinda like type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So that arm... Nanomachine rejection basically causes your body to attack itself. Tissues start ripping apart, your organs malfunction... I was lucky in the end, all I lost was an arm and a handful of toes. Okay, hopefully your di- <laughs> I was gonna say, hopefully uh, type 2 diabetes doesn't tear apart your organs. Cause that would be painful. <laughs> Sounds akin to uh, MS. Where basically you're, thankfully no, yeah. <laughs> you're like, Christ, that would, that would be, oh boy. MS is, well, not quite ripping your tissues apart, but it's like where your immune system attacks itself. Get it? A handful? Because I lost five? Again, bad puns. A good bad pun just makes you cringe when you get it. A bad bad pun is when you have to explain the punchline. Ahem. <laughs> anyway. I have a prosthetic arm, but it's in maintenance right now. <laughs> God. Ah, I see. It's a bit weird to be without it. I still feel like it's there. 
Just a couple of hours ago, I tried to grab something and I just stood there, thinking that arm was doing something. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, mind giving me another drink? We can keep talking about my stump after that. Um, right. What do you want? Let's try something classy. It's weird being in a bar and not asking for a fancy drink. Ah. Well, she feels like she'd be one of the 8 out of 10 smug assholes that would recommend this drink. So we'll get a Brantini. One, two, three. Von aged mixed. Brantini. Mixed, not blended. Here. This looks expensive, alright. I'm starting to have second thoughts right now. Just drink it. <laughs> I'm starting to feel dizzy. That's nice. It is? Of course. I spent so much time in hospitals and whatnot. Now I'm just living my life, you know? And interestingly, Nice bit of a visual cue. That counter isn't going up. <laughs> Despite uh, it not being a free bar. Hmm. <laughs> just, it's just a little bit of a thing to notice. Yeah, I can get that. Wait, quarantine? Type 2 nano- Hey, speaking of type 1 and type 2. Type 2 nanomachine rejection patients are put in special chambers free from the nanomachine particles in the air. That prevents them from being assimilated and aggravating the whole situation. To be fair, not all of my memories of that chamber are bad. I mean, I did spend three, four years in one of those places. Really? That long? Well, I didn't go for the genetic level treatment, so it's longer and a lot less expensive. Not going to complain, though. I'm alive thanks to all that. I would imagine the long. Given how crap some healthcare systems are, I would imagine the longer the more expensive, not the other way around. And I left with so many fond memories, too. And that's what you meant with the whole feeling nostalgic and isolated places thing. Yep. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Just dizzy. Hey, Joe, if I ordered two drinks, would you be willing to share one with me? Be honest, talk about the treatment all that made me feel a bit lonely. Sorry if it's not something you can do, but I had to ask. Not something I normally do, but... Yeah, what the hell. Alright then, I want a piano man and a piano woman. Who's the man and who's the woman in this situation? Boop, 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 boop. All of the rocks have mixed. Boop. Two, three, four, five, one. Two, three, four, five, one, two. Two, three, one, two, three. Edge mix. Boop. Two drinks. Which one do you want? Do you prefer the man or the woman? I'm fine with either, really. Okay, I'll pick the woman then. Cheers! The maybe. I just saw the maybe this time. Alright, this is getting weird. I said, cheers! Oh, cheers. Yeah! <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah, I guess I'm fine. Just dizzy and sad. I miss Lynette. Lynette? Who? She and I were the only patients with nanomachine rejection in the hospital. We were together every day. When it was time to eat, she was there. During visiting hours, she was there. Whenever I slept, whenever I cried, whenever I laughed, she was always there. When I lost my arm, she told me I could have hers as compensation. I could use it however I wanted. What happened to her? Tokyo flu. Something went wrong with her immune system and the flu started ticking in. I tried to urge part of her treatment to reduce the symptoms, but it only made the nanomachines go wild. It eventually got to her brain and... I see. Sorry to hear that. The worst part is, if they left her as she'd been, I might have been able to spend an extra year or so with her. All that work only got her killed sooner. I didn't get a chance to try and say goodbye, she just vanished. That's tough. I miss her every day, you know. Say so I want to forget her, but the truth is, I just want this pain to go away. It's been two years and I feel the pain. Every second is just a second without her. And it can get so lonely. 
sorry, am I making you uncomfortable, Joe? You're not, don't worry. Still, sorry about that, I'm just... We had so many plans about what we do after we left. We were so close to being together without that pesky nano machine rejection and... It's not fair, you know. Why do I get to be here when she doesn't? I try to enjoy life as much as I can, enjoy it for the both of us, but it doesn't seem enough. What do you think? What do I think? Um... Well... I think about my grandpa. Your grandpa? He was a harsh guy. Really sincere, but not one to mess with platitudes. Not like he had a lot of enemies, but many people were cautious around him. But once he died, I never heard a single bad comment from him. Not even from those who used to bow mad for him every now and then. Really? Well, the best thing about death is that after you die, all the wrongs you ever committed feel meaningless. It really makes you think about how petty some things can be. Yeah. On second thought, that doesn't have much to do with what you said. What I'm trying to say is, don't try out so hard. Just live, you know? Be grateful that you have that chance. I know what you're feeling right now, but you'll get better. Eventually, all you remember is the happy moments. I hope so. Sounds like you and your grandfather were close. He was my best friend. Losing him was quite the blow. You have any regrets in regards to him? I guess not. I mean, it's not like I had a dramatic goodbye or anything like that. He died in a hospital bed while I was at home. But, I don't know. I never had a heated discussion with him, so I don't have that problem. Sure, there's always a bit of I wish I could have told him this, but that's bound to happen, regardless of who you're talking about. Did you leave Lynette after a fight or something? No, of course not. Then you're luckier than most people. Oh. What I mean is... Whenever you feel safe, remember that she left your life while both of you on good terms. Whenever you feel down, just try to hold on to that. Yeah, I could try that. <laughs> I'll cheer me up a bit somehow, thanks. Anytime. I should be leaving now. Thanks for such a lovely night, Joe. If you're lonely again, just come back. I will. Well, that was an entertaining diversion. Ah, boss, what happened? I came to ask you that, eh? You just spent an hour talking to yourself. No, I didn't. There was a girl called Anna here. There was nobody here. I was actually coming to tell you we're going to close for tonight and that you were chatting with thin air. A spirit to talk, too. I can't be. She paid for her drinks. Did she? Did she pay for her drinks, though? The registry says the money came from your account. All oh, the drinks I served her. You mean the liquid that someone who is definitely not going to be me has to clean up off the floor? But I... Jill, you're worrying me. Are you okay? That's when I need another employee who talks to herself. Yeah, I'm fine. I just... Are you sure there wasn't anyone else there? You even checked security cameras. You were here by yourself this whole time. Maybe you're tired. You were probably just sleep talking really intensely or something. Yeah, maybe. Come on, I'll drive you home. Maybe you just need a rest. What the hell just happened? And that was Anna. Bit of a myste mystery. Was that a hallucination? Was that a real person? For those that saw the project, she's definitely a real person. <laughs> It adds for why, well, I would say watch the VODs, but I think they're probably long deleted by this point. And that, about a couple of years, about a year or so later, was the rest of Valhalla that I never played live on air. <laughs> that was fun, it was nice to revisit it. And in true Valhalla fashion, of course there's going to be lines that just go, okay, great see game. And on top of that, I got a new achievement. Uh, Streamlabs, I'm still streaming. How can I have stats for a stream that's still ongoing? <laughs> As you can see, I'm still missing a few achievements. I'm missing a different breed of cat, which is just a special, uh, triggering a special conversation. 
on a hackering pilgrimage, which is again uh, triggering another special conversation. Cyberfunk, which I believe there's a quote in the uh, in the a mass of quotes. I'm gonna try quote six. Nope, it definitely wasn't quote six. Cause uh, let's try ten. Okay, final try. Quote seven. Okay, apparently my I read that as cyberfuck was uh, earlier than that because I remember where that came from. That was from Hollow Knight. <laughs> In the name of beauty, win a video game, it's win a Toho shooter, which is, uh, quite difficult. And play the month, which is basically beat the entire game without making a mistake. That weird emoticon is, I believe you have to press 8 to do it. Living with style, unlock all the decorations, which I believe is just buy everything from JC Elton. Hit the jukebox, which, uh... Kelsa Police, Unlock Everything, all the songs, and then Jill of All Trades, which is essentially the Steam's version of Platinum, of Beat, Get Everything. The most difficult one is definitely In the Name of Beauty. That game is freaking difficult, man. I don't play Toho, though, which is... I'm not a big Toho player, so that's probably why uh, it didn't quite go... I'm not quite as good as this as I think. Uh, it feels weird uh, not doing a challenge with a <laughs> with a spicy bean involved, especially after yesterday. So I'm kind of tempted to roll the bean boozle wheel and then chat a little bit about the project and then decide what do from there. Yeah, why not? Uno momento. Should around here somewhere. The Spice Beans! Let's see what Lady Luck has on the wheel today. Don't worry, I'm not gonna just... down a Carolina Reaper Bean just for shits and giggles this time. <laughs> well, unless I roll it. In which case, rip me. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's spin that pointer! Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> well, it's not Carolina Reaper, but it is the second hottest on the list, Habanero. With the one on the right being Carolina Reaper. So, Habanero is the uh, bright orange one. Since the effects of the Carolina Reaper didn't really kick in until I had... Uh, Two in a row. I'm gonna have uh, two in a row. Right. Don't matter lack of messages. It sounds like the internet's not being too fucky for my brother. I would hope so, considering I literally turned off every single possible Wi-Fi enabled device just to be on the safe side. Anywho. Two habaneros down the hatch, and let's see how this goes. And uh, This aftertaste feels worse. Oh god, that feels worse. Mmm. <laughs> The aftertaste of the cayenne, habanero, even. Cayenne's on the low. That somehow feels worse of an aftertaste than the Carolina Reaper did. Like the Carolina Reaper was like, "Whoa, that's a that's quite a kick." This just feels worse somehow. Maybe it's because I ate two in a row. Mmm. God, that really does have a bit of a... 
that's surprisingly lingering. I don't have anything stuck to my teeth, so... Whoa, that really is lingering. <laughs> Probably gonna need to get myself some water. Or, well, milk. Post stream. But not as bad as the Carolina Reaper, but definitely a worse aftertaste. Which is interesting. Ugh. Maybe next time I have a full free week, I should just get the actual... Get the actual pepper itself, or like, that one hot chip or something. Actually, I wonder how much that is on Amazon. Me making myself suffer for some form of entertainment. The hot chip. There is hot sauce, that is an album. The hot chip challenge. Dear God! That is 37 quid, fuck that! <laughs> Carolina Reaper Scorpion Pepper was 39.99 and now 37.99. Fuck that! I I want something that's gonna burn me, not burn a hole in my wallet. God damn, that's expensive. Look at now. I think I'll just stick with the spicy beans. That was a tenner. That's not bad. I'll take a tenner. Take a tenner for a week of laughter and me going, oh fuck, why did I do this to myself? Then, oh god, why did I do this to myself, and why did I pay so much to make myself suffer? Like, fucking hell. Yeah, anyway, I was going to talk about the uh, Valhalla project as a whole when I did it way back when. Ah, oh, by that stuffiness that's now come to my nose. Uh, yeah, Valhalla was definitely one of the fun projects, and I do remember the being when... Uh, I met Michi, who's become a bit of a semi-regular around the box bar, and a traditional artist, I think her name was Cyber Red or something? I need to double check the name. I don't think I've seen them around as much lately. But to be fair, that's kind of the one joys of being a variety streamer. You get people just there for their specific niche. Or if you're somebody that... <laughs> Or partially also. The fact that I stream so ridiculously late. I think it's Cyber Rad? Can't remember the name now. That's gonna rough. That's rough. Damn. I will say, it was definitely the project that I feel I didn't give the enough justice to because it got split by like so many different things going on at the time because it was around the start of last year and then things got like kind of busy in between the joys of the third year of university so what probably would have been maybe a month a month and a half kind of wound up lasting a long a lot longer than it should have which i i said well i certainly enjoyed it i wish it was i, I streamed it a little bit more consistently that way it sort of flowed a little better basically that's my uh, personal thoughts on the matter, anyway. Oh, God. My mouth is seriously blah, having a bit of a hum with that. I think if I plan ever to revisit the uh, projects of old, like Pokemon White and Valhalla and Catherine and Hollow Knight. I think I already said Hollow Knight. Go hydrate. I think I will. Um... I think if I were definitely to revisit Valhalla, I would probably try and see if I can do a 100% run. So, uh, we basically just do the main plot. I'll probably ignore the um, prologue and Anna again. Although, if I'm going to do 100%, I might as well do prologue and Anna. And especially considering I've done prologue and Anna live on air now, so... But at the very least, I would go 
try and get all the achievements in the game. That's if I would plan to revisit it. But yeah, that was a little quick. A little bit shorter than Pokemon did. I think Pokemon was about... Uh, a little bit longer than Pokemon. I think Pokemon was about two hours, and then I did the entirety of the uh, hero story, which took about three hours and a bit. This took two hours and 20 minutes, from the looks of it. Which significantly longer than what I normally do for a stream, but... Ugh, I don't have a huge amount of content planned. Um... Let me see how long that second game is. I'm going to take a short break just to see how long that other game I had planned is, and we'll go from there. Alrighty, I'm back. I just wanted to take a quick look at how long this other game I have planned will take, and it's apparently about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, so... Uh, we will play that game up until completion, and then I will call it a day from there. So, what game is it, for those that haven't refreshed the, uh, title? Well, the game is called Valhalla Kids. Called Valhalla Kids, a game that was made, I think, for April Fool's or something, where the cast of Valhalla are all in the same high school. God, that's loud. Oh, my ears! Okay, hang on. Ugh, oh, that completely just burst my goddamn ears. Ow! Right, how loud? I'm gonna look at my voice next time. Oh, hi, you can see my name there. Don't dox me. Volume mixer. Right. Let's put that at 50. Maximize it and start. Uh, I should probably have a way to put that in a window cap if I'm gonna be honest. Uh, let me take off monitor cap. Turn on the current game. I swear to god if this doesn't work. There we go. A little bit too... Oh god, that is... That is some weird dimensions you've got there. That'll do. How does the sound, uh... How is the sound balancing? Because, good god, if that bursts my eardrums, I'm pretty sure that bursts other people's eardrums. It's a cloudy, humid day. Any day that's up to you of your will to do anything at all. Minding my own business at the class when a girl showed up at the door. Excuse me, Dana? Holy! And then a Donna Kebab crashed through the window! Huh? Ah, uh, sorry, you. Ah, Stella! I like this odd stuff. <laughs> Kinda cute. It's a bad time. You saw nothing. What's up? See, it's about Sai. Say no more, who do I have to beat up? That's the thing, we don't know yet. He's working on a boo for next week's festival. He was storing it in the auditorium. To uh, turn it down just a tiny bit more. Yeah, that's still quite loud. Let me put it at 25. Right, that's all in the green now, so. Bit better? Yeah, that kind of, that 
literally was at 50 and it was still getting in the yellow. Cool, cool. She was starting it in the auditorium like everyone else, but... Schoolyard. Yeesh, she actually went and bothered Dana about this? Everything's fine, don't worry. It's not fine! You poured your soul into that booth to make it perfect. I, I, I didn't, really. And then someone came and destroyed it. You deserve better than that. I didn't do much, so I didn't lose. Filthy jabronis destroy the hard work of an innocent girl. <laughs> Dana looks ready to beat the shit out of somebody. I'll track their asses down and make them pay. First, I gotta ask some questions. Great, I'll be at your base if you need me. Because that place is a mess. How can you stand be there? You can't even walk properly. Uh, I just can't leave it knowing it's like that. Now go, you gotta find that terrorist. Let's go. Where do I start looking? Maybe I should ask someone. Talk. Thanks for worrying, Dana, but it's not. It is. I just can't let a scumbag like this roam free in my school. Be careful, okay? Stella. I think at the bottom of this atrocious mess. Where do you think I should start looking? It's hard, of course. That's where it all took place. Sounds good. And then look. What let this booth's death be in vain? Didn't really die. Um. <laughs> so, move auditorium. Ah, right. Let's check out the, uh... <laughs> Gabby. You can't pass. Whoa, why not? Because I'm the law, and the law says you can't pass. Because I'm the law. Um... Oh, it's you, Gabby. Agent Extra... Extra... Awesome Agent Gabby. Who gave you authority? Authority... What's that? Power to say I can't pass. The law! But aren't you the law? Yes. Then you gave yourself power? I did what? You say you're the law. I am, and the law gave you authority. Author- Yes! Then you gave yourself authority? <laughs> say, where's Jill? At the entrance near the blue tree. Thank you. Blue tree? Boop. To the tree! Great! Just the girl in the tits I was looking for, god damn it! Hey there, could you come ch chill up for a bit? What? What happened? D nothing happened. Were you crying? Who the fuck made you cry? Nothing. Who's nothing? Nothing made me fucking cry, I just kinda did. Ah. Aww. I know, right? You the one. Are you here to patronize me too, boss? Maybe later. Say, can you do something about Gabby? That brat sneak into the cafeteria again. I wish. I have a craving for pickles right now. What? What's this about pickles? Last week, Gabby snuck into the cafeteria and put the pickles in everything. <laughs> oh god, that girl. So, what was she doing this time? She's blocking the auditorium entrance. Saying she's the law. Ah. Don't worry, it's almost at nap time. She'll be out of there in no time. Really? Yeah, she'll probably be gone by the time you get there. To be clear, no one bullied you into crying, right? Yeah, that one's beyond my reach. You'd be surprised at how easy it is to make me cry, honestly. Why do you want to get into the auditorium? Tonight's project for the festival got crushed and I'm investigating. It was stored in there, so that's the scene of the crime. I see, I see. What do you expect to find in there? Dinner? Something epic? Like what, a copy of Homer's Iliad lying on the floor? <laughs> Fuck. Ha! <laughs> made you laugh. <laughs> Move to the auditorium. Oh, Gabby's gone. Well, let's check the auditorium. I wasn't expecting, I was expecting a move, not a lock. 
Hmm. Well, that's one hell of a... Big hole? Oh. Yahoo, Data! You can't see the big hole, too? I came to investigate the place, but I didn't expect this. Investigate? What do you investigate? Tell me! Tell me! Wow. Sounds like, uh, this is a bit of a long story, kind of well. Let's talk in my classroom. It's cool over there. Sure. Have a look. At the hole. The plot thickens. <laughs> where, where did it go? Fell in the hole. What hole? Oh, God! <laughs> if you get that reference... Well done. <laughs> what got done with that done bell, Dorothy? Oh yeah, that. The weirdest thing happened. I could oh, that looked like a dumbbell, not a kebab. A kebab just went and crashed through the window. You okay, Dana? Can I keep it? We don't care where it's been, sure. So tell me, who was with you at the auditorium? You saw someone else? Don't play stupid. I bet you're about to indulge in some steamy action before seeing the hole. You've lost me. So you went at the auditorium to make out? You were actually investigating? Well, yeah. And here I thought Honey finally hit the jackpot. Dorothy, please explain what the hell you're on about. Dax, people go to that auditorium to make out, to eat each other. I'm th given the, it's a game of Valhalla, given the nature of Valhalla, I'm surprised it just went to eat each other out. <laughs> I'll, I'll just be straight to the fucking punch there. <laughs> also, go figure Dorothy would be the one saying that. <laughs> just like, wow, straight to the fucking point. Jesus. Yeah, no. Aww. What were you investigating? Scythe Project got destroyed and it was stored there. And you think the ceiling crushed it? I thought someone crushed it. Well, the ceiling didn't just disappear. I heard they were clearing away rubble and debris before. To be honest, I'm all worried if someone got hurt. So mind if I tag along for a bit? I'm kinda bored, to be honest. Well, if I can take the kebab with me. Sure. Let's check on everyone, see if someone's hurt. Nothing to look at. Well, let's go to the yard. Betty! Whoa, did you bring up the snack? Mine. Don't be like that. Where did you find it anyway? On the floor. Floor kebabs at the heel health. And if you got that reference, I feel sorry for you that we have to wait about another 20 plus years for a sequel. Did it now? I thought nobody even heard it or it came running over. So I can have some if she wants so. Oh, I'm fine, thank you. It's a sigh. Yes, yes. <laughs> when you found a booth, did it have any debris on it? Yeah. So the ceiling did collapse on top of it. Why didn't you tell me this before? I tried to, but you were so focused on finding a culprit that I wasn't able to. Dana. Dana, Dana, Dana. <sighs> Here I wanted to punch someone. Now I just want to kick myself. I'm worried that someone might have been hurt, you know. Me too. Come on, still have one more duty. What are you buying for, by the way? Oh, you know, the basics. Glue, nails, paper, markers, booze, booze. What was that last one? Markers. <laughs> Oh, it's getting done fast. Extra hands go a long way. What do you think? She looks cute as if she went back wearing a female uniform. But what about bruises? None that look fresh enough. You said something? We're just cheering you on. Go, Sai, go! <laughs> hmm. Eh? <laughs> what do you smell? An answer. Something wrong? How did you get those wounds? I tripped on my way here. When? That was by Zephasai. How long ago? Uh... Like an hour ago or something. Why so many questions? Those bruises should be fresher. Unless you tripped out some stairs, you shouldn't be so wounded. Did, did I just immediately figure out what happened? 
I was gonna make out with Vero when the roof fell and I tripped on Sai's project running away and I crushed it and... Now I'm sad and hurt and y you get the gist. <laughs> Oh my god, you dumb girl. Why didn't you get some help with those wounds? I'm sorry. Well, you didn't really crush it intentionally. Did it be harder for me, but... I'm worried about you. You could have seriously died there. See, it's proof of rebel and debris on it. I was probably there before I fell over it. Well, I guess that's that mystery solved. Why did the ceiling collapse, though? Where did the command kebab come from? Mystery solved. Anyway, you need help? I do, actually. Alright, count me in. Me too! Really? Awesome! Hours later. Whew, I'm beat. Why that we didn't finish it today? All that time we could have been helping Sai instead of chasing shadows. Sorry. Like Sai said, not like you did it on purpose. Hey Sai. Thank you so much! Ah, ah so bright! It's weird I couldn't finish on time, but you all helped me out so much. I didn't just get it back to speed, I was having a lot of fun, too. <laughs> well, count me for tomorrow, too. Me, too. And me. I haven't turned out all the okay, frankly. I say we celebrate with meat. I think even cooked. Well, let's just take a bite, and... There's paper. On the floor, I'm surprised there's only paper on it. Does it say something? We have taken your friend, Iris, captive to come to the pier alone. What? To be continued. To be continued. Never. <laughs> and that was Valhalla Kids. <laughs> About as short and <laughs> wild as I expected it to be. <laughs> uh, short and sweet. <laughs> Just... Uh, that was funny. <laughs> and I think with that, might be a couple hours earlier than expected, but... I didn't really plan much for Tuesday. It was just going to be the visual novel day. Tomorrow and Thursday will definitely be more to the usual five hours, because it's Catherine, the uh, Tower of Babel, which is that bonus mode, which, given I've only ever gotten through one out of those five, it's definitely going to be a definite long haul. Uh, Thursday will be Hollow Knight, which, given its Pantheon of Hallowness speedruns, that will definitely take some time. And then Friday will probably be a bit of chatting viewer games. Maybe playing some Xenoblade 3. Just depends. Depends on how many people we get in. If we get a few people. If we get a few bits and people in, I'll do some viewer games. But I think with that, I'm going to call it a day. That was fun. And a good visit into a... <laughs> and a good funny visit into a different game. Not many people live that I'd be up for sending a raid to. Yeah, I think the Blade 3 comes out this week. I'll probably play. I'll probably play a bit. Maybe I'll host Funny Orca Go Burr. Unless you've got somebody who's live near. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for jo joining. I, I'm feeling generous, so it's a freebie guide the raid. Well, guide the host, I guess. Ugh, stretch. boop a -doo. I'll just do the obligatory Twitter. Inarian? Sure. Let's have a look. Just do the obligatory Twitter, YouTube, Discord. Copy and paste that name. Boop, boop, copy. Paste. Seven days to die. Hmm, fire enough. Yeah. We will throw a host at them. Because I got some shit that I need to do, so... Probably uh, better that I just do a host and dip. And with that, thank you all for watching day two of the Box Bar Celebration. Hope you have a good rest of your evening, and tune in tomorrow for uh, Catherine, the Climb of Babel, puzzle-solving galore, and me attempting to use my brain.
<laughs> Bye for now and enjoy Inarian as recommended by Neo. Bye for now. <laughs>